that. And here's our last lesson for, I guess, this week, if that's what you're on, in grammar. We've been doing some easy grammar. Um, should have been pretty easy for y'all. All right, lesson four, this is proper adjectives, compound adjectives, adjective noun combinations. That's what we're going over today. All right, so here we have the capitalization rules uh, written down again. This was from yesterday. They've just written these down without the examples. Of course, yesterday they gave the examples. A proper adjective is formed from a proper name. Proper adjectives are capitalized. Now, a person, a proper noun would be Aristotle. A proper adjective might be the Aristotelian philosophy. A place might be Spain. That's a proper noun. This is the common noun. This is the proper noun. A proper adjective might be a Spanish city. Because, see, notice these tell which one or whose. They answer the questions that adjectives answer. Proper adjectives just simply mean that it is an adjective that answers those questions, but it's proper. A holiday might be Valentine's Day. Notice both are capitalized. Okay, some Valentine candy. And this one, Valentine, is a proper adjective, so you'd uppercase it. A month might be March, March Madness. March here would be an adjective because it's telling which one. All right, Shakespeare wrote a number of sonnets. I was reading some Shakespearean sonnets yesterday. Notice this is uppercase. This, this right here would be a proper adjective because it's telling what kind of sonnets. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun. The Martian atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide. Martian right here, this is a proper adjective. Okay, so you would list it as an adjective. You just say it's proper because it names, it's formed from a proper noun. On Monday, I felt a little down. I had the Monday blues, proper adjective. The English enjoy a good cup of tea and a muffin. Gerald enjoys a good English muffin. The German-speaking tourists were lost in Central Park. The archaeologists unearthed some pre-Columbian remains. Okay. Now, words that are not usually capitalized remain lowercase even when they are attached to a proper adjective. A compound adjective combines two words into a single adjective with a single meaning. When the mine collapsed, it sent a plume of dust sky high. I just had a 30-minute study session, okay? Now, sky high, sky is a noun, Adge uh, high would be an adjective, okay? Here, 30 is an adjective minute, because remember this answers, um, this answers, uh, is it where, sky high? How many and whose? Which one, what kind, sky high. Not sure what that answers, but that would be it. 30, of course, answers, you know, how many. Uh, user friendly, this is a noun, this is an adjective. High speed, this is an adjective, this is a noun. Okay, the sky high plume of dust could be seen for miles. There you are right there. Uh, sky is the noun, and then the high is the adjective because it tells what kind of plume. My study session was 30 minutes, okay? Uh, these are just showing how, why these are what they are here. Okay, does that make sense? You can look at that and tell, you should be able to. All right, so exercise 4A, forming proper adjectives from proper nouns. Form adjectives from the following proper nouns. Some will change form and others will not. Write each adjective into the correct blank in the sentences below. If you are not familiar with the proper nouns, you may look them up online at Encyclopedia Britannica. I don't suggest using Wikipedia or some other source. This will help you complete the sentences as well. This exercise might challenge your general knowledge, but you can always ask your instructor for help. All right, so um, let's see. Traditionally, blank cakes are made by layering lard rice flour paste and a bean paste diluted with white sugar but each area of china has its own variation on the recipe so we have to put something here one of these 
I'm thinking, let's see, I don't know what would go there. Form adjectives from the following proper nouns. So these are all proper nouns, so we need to use these to make a, a proper adjective. So what kind of cakes? Um, we could do, I don't know. The only thing that makes sense to me would be Christmas. I don't even know what that means. Shinkangsen? I don't know what that means. I don't want to look it up because I, I don't know what's going to pop up. So um, I'm not sure what that is, but actually I have my phone in front of me. So let me look that up. So that way if something pops up that's not appropriate, I can... I don't have to have it on here. I don't know why that would be inappropriate. Uh, shink and sin. I don't even know if that's how you say it. Um, the shinkansen, colloquially known in English as the bullet train, is a network of high-speed railway lines in Japan. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, bullet trains in Japan. There you go. We just learned that together. Ta-da! The Shinkansen. I don't know how you say it. Okay, so I'm going with Christmas. Christmas cakes. That's the only thing that I know of, right? So you can put that there. Of course, you'd have to uppercase it. Just write it like that. Now, so basically you see that Christmas up here is just a proper noun. Okay, but when you put it right here in front of cakes, it tells what kind of cake. So then it becomes a proper adjective because it changes the part of speech. So I'd put Christmas there. All right, made by layering, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, let's go down here. The Blank Festival, known as Plow Monday, marked the return to work after 12th night. I don't even know what that is. Like, that just sounds like blah 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 to me but I'm gonna assume it's gonna be this right here let me look that up I don't really want y'all looking stuff up uh, without me knowing what it is um, any anybody okay so double ninth festival okay so we're not feedable I'm typing in festival Monday, October 7th is the Double Ninth Festival for 2019. The Double Ninth Festival observed on the ninth day of the ninth month in the Chinese calendar is a traditional Chinese holiday. Um, yeah, it's just a holiday. The ninth day of the ninth month. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And it's a festival, Chinese festival. All right, so we could do the Double Night Festival. Uh, and see, they messed up. They put that word here. It shouldn't be there. Known as Plow Monday. Ooh, I better look that up. Because that may not be the same thing. Oh, wait a minute. 3414. Oh, let's look and see what this is. Plow. What is that? Plow Monday? I guess that's how you pronounce that. Plow Monday is the traditional start of the English agricultural year. While local practices may vary, Plow Monday is generally the first Monday after the 12th day, uh, 6th of January. References to Plow Monday date back to the, as late as the 15th century. The day before Plow Monday is sometimes referred to as Plow Sunday. Wow. <laughs> okay, there we are. So, I guess that might not be that. See, so it would be the, I don't know, Plow Monday? I don't know. I'm guessing this, but that wouldn't be right, would it? Because this is Chinese and this is English. So, I wonder what that would be. Friday Festival? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so blank cathedrals were built by medieval journeymen, guilds of craftsmen who were expert woodcarvers, blacksmiths, stonemasons, plasterers, ironworkers, and glaziers. What kind of cathedrals? Perhaps this? Goth? But we'd need to change that 
Remember up here it says that some words, some will change form. I think this would become Gothic. Okay, this is a uh, proper noun, goth, but if you change it to gothic, it becomes a proper adjective because it describes what kind of cathedrals, gothic cathedrals. Okay, during the blank period in England, many farmers left their land to live in cities and work in factories. Hmm. Oh no. During the what period in England? Hmm, what is it called? Oh, ta da! Y'all probably got it before me. This. But we'd have to change it from Victoria, this is a proper noun, to use it as what kind of period? Victorian period. Have to change it, put an N on it. Victorian period. By blank standards, Hollywood Hills and Culver City are just a stone's throw from each other. By blank standards. Mm. What's Culver City? Hollywood Hills and Culver City. By what standards? Oh. Yeah, Hollywood Hills and Culver City are in California. So Los Angeles would be what we're used. So by, I guess it would be Los, Angels? Los, An Los, I don't know what you would say on that. I'd have to look that one up. But I know it's gonna be Los Angeles, but I'm not sure how you would change that by uh, to make this uh, an adjective Los Angeles because you wouldn't leave it that it would need to change uh, Los Angeles standards I'm not sure what that would be put down what you think that might be and I'll check it I'm not gonna grade this but because we're just doing this together because this is a lot of history stuff and things that I don't even know. So uh, somehow this would be changed to go here because I know all this has to do with California. So I'm not sure how that would work, but when I check it, I'll put the right answer so we'll know. All right, let's do this one. The diagonal section of the Hungwayagin section of the Ming Wall is called Heartbreak Hill by many runners in the blank marathon. In the, uh, would it be this? Because, yeah, I think it would be the, shh, what, wait a minute, what did we say? I changed my password on my phone, so I keep messing it up. Um, let's see. Hmm, yeah, I'm, I'm not real familiar with hardly any of these. This is really cool. Okay, so let's look at, um, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to look at. Um, Los Angeles. Oh, Angeles, Angeles. Yeah, this is not going to tell me. Ang. I'm looking something up. Okay. Yeah. On this one, oh my gracious. On this one right here. No, this one. It would be loss, L-O-S, and this word would change to become an adjective. It would be, well, there's several different ways, but it would be A-N-G-E-L-E-S, Los Angeles. Um, and there's other ways that you could do it, but Los Angeles. By Los Angeles standards, 
So you have to change that to become an adjective. All right, so let's look at this one. Uh, let's see. Um, let's look up, let me look up Heartbreak Hill and see if it gives me any ideas of this. Okay. Um, all right, I'm looking here. Mm. Yeah, see, I'm not finding it. I, I don't really know. Everything I'm finding is Boston, but there's not, Boston is not up here. So I'm not sure what this would be either. So let's skip that one for now. All right, so here we have my favorite blank cookies are gingerbread men and spritz. Obviously that would be Christmas. So then this one may not be right. Um, but that's okay, just, it might be, I wonder if this might be Irish cakes. No, cause that's China might be Italian, it could be Italian, it could be Irish, it could be um, Chinese, even though Chinese, China's not up here, of course it could be Canadian or whatever, but China, it seems like Chinese would go there, because it's, chair, it's China. Okay, so down here, obviously, this would be Christmas cookies, of course, that would be a proper um, adjective. All right, so the blank train carries over, oh, we know what that is, we already looked it up, it'd be to do. Shinkansen. The Shinkansen train carries over 143 million passengers from Tokyo to Shin Osaka every year. Sometimes at speeds of 200 miles an hour. I don't want to ride it. I found the recipe for gelato di fragola in my, I know what that would be. Come on, look at this. What does that look like? Italian. Italian, so you'd have to change Italy to Italian, Italian cookbook, because that, my friend, is Italian. On Bloody Sunday, which was November 21st, 1920, 14 British military operatives and 14 blank civilians were killed in Dublin. Do you know where Dublin is? Ireland. So I would imagine this would be Irish. Bloody Sunday, I do believe that's an Irish civilians were killed on Bloody Sunday. Urshun, a giant panda on loan to the Blank Zoo in Toronto. Da da da! Toronto, where's that? Canada, so this would be the Canadian Zoo. Gave birth to twin cubs in October of 2015. Each one was the size of a stick of butter. <laughs> it was such a difficult week that we were all more than ready for the blank holiday and the long weekend. Mm, the ready for the Fridayin? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you change Friday to Fridayin? Let me look on here. That's funny. Fridayin. Let me see if that's a word. Yeah, it is. Ha! Yeah, I guess it is. It may just be a made up word. I don't know. It's on here. Yeah, but I don't know if it's even a word. Friday and it says it's on Twitter. So it may just be kind of a made up word. Put Friday in. We'll have fun. It was such a difficult week. We were all more than ready for the Friday in holiday in the long weekend. Whatever that means. <laughs> I guess that means it's a holiday on Friday. Oh, yeah, whatever. Okay. All right. So this was just kind of fun. I don't know. Um, if you can figure whatever the rest of these are that we skipped or didn't know, good and do that. That would be great. All right. Let's look at 4B. Capitalization of proper adjectives. In the following sentences, correct each lowercase letter that should be capitalized by using the proofreader's mark. Remember three lines beneath each letter that should be capitalized. Circle each proper adjective. Finally, write an S for same 
above the proper adjectives that have not changed form from the proper noun. Alright, so in other words, you got three things to look for. You're going to, on your paper, you do not have to rewrite this on your paper. Just go through, and if it should be capitalized, then write the letter or the word. It might be better to write the word, and then put your three lines underneath the first letter to show it should be capitalized. Okay, And then, uh, if it's a proper adjective, circle it. Like this would be a proper adjective and it would be, need to be uppercase because this tells what kind of explorers. So this goes under both of those. Then write an S for same above the proper adjectives that have not changed form from the proper noun. So like Portuguese would have all three because, uh, no, I'm sorry. No, wait a minute. Yeah, because the, the, this changed form from Portugal to Portuguese. So that would not have an S above it, I don't believe. Um, so yeah, so you'll wanna put an S above it. If it's a proper adjective, that is the same as the proper noun. Like for instance, the proper noun Christmas, if it was Christmas cookies, you would put an S above Christmas because that's a proper noun that's also a proper adjective without changing form. Does that make sense? Okay, let's try to do that on these. It's going to be kind of hard. This will be hard. I'm not, most likely not going to grade this, but it's, it's going to be hard. I want you to try to find it. And then on 4C, hyphenating attributive compound adjectives. Hyphens prevent misunderstanding. Explain to your instructor the differences between each pair of phrases. The first one's done for you. If you're confused, ask your instructor for help. Okay, so let me explain it to you. A small town boy. A small town boy. Okay, the one with a hyphen is a boy from a small town. A small town boy is a town boy of diminished size. <laughs> a small boy who is also known as a town boy. A violent crime conference. A violent crime conference. Okay, this would be, this means what it says, a violent crime conference. This is a crime conference that is violent. A high chair cover. This would be a cover on a high chair. This would be a high chair cover. See, see the difference? So you don't have to tell me those, just think of those in your mind and see how silly that would be. Okay? Alrighty then, I'm gonna take pictures of, 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 I don't know if it's going to help you. I'm not going to take pictures of that. We kind of worked through that together. You might as well, well, I'll do this. This and, sorry it's taken so long. Okay. All right, that should be it.